State of Wisconsin, Circuit Court, Manitowoc County, Branch 1. State of Wisconsin Plaintiff v. Stephen A. Avery Defendant, Arraignment and Bail Modification, Case Number 05-CF-375 and 05-CF-381, Date January 17, 2006, before the Honorable Patrick L. Willis Circuit Court Judge. Appearances, Kenneth Kratz, Special Prosecutor on the behalf of the State of Wisconsin, Eric Loy, Attorney at Law on behalf of the Defendant, Craig Johnson, Attorney at Law on the behalf of the Defendant, Stephen A. Avery, Defendant appeared in person. The court at this time, the court calls the State of Wisconsin versus Stephen A. Avery case number case numbers 05-CF-375 and 05-CF-381. These matters are scheduled for an arraignment on bail modification motion hearing today. Will the parties state their appearances for the record, please? Attorney Kratz, State of Wisconsin, appears by Calumet County District Attorney. Ken Kratz is appearing as Special Prosecutor. Attorney Loy, Stephen Avery appears personally and by his attorneys, Eric Loy and Craig Johnson, Your Honor. The court, very well. It's my understanding that the state has filed an information case on 05-CF-381 that has not filed an inform information in on 05-CF-375. Is that correct, Mr. Kratz? Attorney Kratz, that is correct, Judge. We have joined the three counts to the two counts from 381 into a single count in 375 and a single information in 05-CF-381. The court, all right. The law is, then, in the case of 05-CF-375, that if the information is not filed within 30 days of the, of the bind over, the matter is dismissed without prejudice. Does either party have an objection, objection in the, to the court in dismissing this matter? Attorney Kratz, no judge, that should be, that should occur. Attorney Loy, no objection, your honor. The court, all right. Then the court will dismiss case 05-CF-375. Mr. Loy, has your client received the information in case 05-CF-381? Attorney Loy, we have the information, your honor, and will waive its reading and enter pleas of not guilty on to all charges, reserving our right to object to the jurisdiction of the court and particularly to object adding the felon with a gun charge the information in 381. Very well, and before I accept your plea, it's my understanding that the defendant also wishes to file a motion to change the venue. Is that correct? Attorney Loy, we do, your honor. We are filing that today pursuant to the statute. However, we are also reserving our right to withdraw that motion and to for Mr. Avery to insist on his constitutional right to be tried by a jury from his camp from this county. The court, very well. The court will note that in that the motion has not been has been filed timely filed. I will receive it at that at that time at this time. I will accept the defendant's not guilty plea to the three charges in the information. And at this time, before proceeding to bail modification notion motion for purposes of scheduling, I would like to set a deadline by which pretrial motions, if any, if there to be any others, should be filed. I will hear the parties with respect to that issue at this time. Mr. Loy, how much time do you anticipate the defense would need for such filings? Attorney Loy, Your Honor, there are a number of potential motions in this case. I believe there, are, there were 15 to 20 search warrants. We have to look at those. Mr. Kratz has been very good about providing us with discovery and we, we, I think I have the majority of those materials. I believe there's still more to come though and it's a rather high stack of paperwork. What we would ask the court to do is to give us approximately two months to file motions and perhaps set a status date near the end of that time period. At that time, then the court will know what we file and the scheduling can be done. The court, all right. I started out earlier with my calendar, but my judicial assistant got it before I came out. So I'll get my calendar at this time. I'm looking at Friday, March 17th then, as a date for filing those motions. And I could set a status conference. Let's see, how about 10 o'clock on Friday 
March the 10th. Will that work for the parties? Attorney Loy, I was wondering if you would want to set the status conference for after the deadline. That's the question I have. The court, all right. I misunderstood. I thought you were leaving the possibility possibility you might ask for a longer period. All right, let's set the status conference for then for how about March the 23rd at 10? Attorney Loy, Your Honor, I'm scheduled to be gone that day. Most of the rest of the week, I'm free if the court has any other time. The court, all right. Friday the 24th at 10. Attorney Johnson, that's fine unless we could do it a little bit earlier. The court, earlier in the morning. Attorney Johnson, by like 9. The court, I have got a sentencing set for 9 and a plea date for 9.30. Attorney Johnson, that's fine then. 10 will work. The court, okay, otherwise I could do it at 8.30, but I know some folks are traveling to get here. I'd be happy to do it at 8.30 if that works for the parties. 8.30 is fine with me. The court, Mr. Krantz, doesn't matter to me, Judge. The court, all right, 8.30 it is on Friday the 24th. Attorney Kratz, so I understand, Judge, we will be scheduling the motion hearing at that time and we'll at least begin to discuss potential trial dates. The court, yes, and I will ask the parties at this time to, after you've had a chance to review the discovery, have some idea of how long each of you will believe the trial will take, to have that information ready for the court at that, at that time of the status conference so we can look at scheduling this matter for trial at that time, along with setting a motion date for any motions that are filed. Partial transcript begins here. At this time, then, the court will move on to the defendant's motion for modification of bail. Mr. Loy or Mr. Johnson, which, which one of you will be heard on that notice? Attorney Loy, Your Honor, we filed, actually, we recently filed an amended motion for bail reduction. And the amendment, we're asking for the court to consider allowing sureties. And the sureties would be Mr. Avery's family. They are here in the courtroom today, and I've talked with them. They are willing to guarantee a recognizance bond. They have property in the county. They own the Avery Salvage Yard business and land. I believe that's worth somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 to 250,000, if not more. Mr. Avery is a lifetime resident of Manitowoc County, except during a period of time when he was incarcerated. He has very substantial ties to the community. His parents, his siblings, his children all reside in, in the county. And most tellingly, Your Honor, early on in this investigation, when evidence was found at the Avery Salvage Yard and Mr. Avery was questioned, he was cooperative with law enforcement. He, despite knowing that he was at least a person of interest, he didn't go anywhere. He was, I believe, up in Crivets at the family cabin, and he came back. There's no reason to believe that Mr. Avery would flee, um, given his behavior before he was incarcerated. Um, he is entitled, He talked with law enforcement officers. He allowed law enforcement officers to access his residence. I don't see any reason to think that Mr. Avery is likely to flee. He has not been able to post the bail that's currently set. I believe that bail right at this time is at 500000 Your Honor, we would ask the court to reduce the bail to a smaller amount, perhaps $100,000, or we've asked the court and this actually would be our preference to set the bail as a recognizance bail, but a recognizance bail that, that had to be guaranteed by. I think the wording of the statute is solvent sureties, and the solvent surety would be his parents and other family members. I don't think that Mr. Avery would be likely to violate that bail if he knew that you know his family's livelihood was on the line if he did. So, Your Honor, that would be our request. The court, all right, Mr. Kratz. Attorney Kratz, thank you, Judge. When the original bond issue was brought up, the state cited Section 969.01, Section 4, that the factors that this court should consider when determining bond. The state has argued at that time for a $1 million cash bond. The court did set a $500,000, noting that the gravity of the offense, the penalties involved, and the degree of violence that was used in this case the degree of violence he used, evidence in hiding and destruction, the defendant's felon, felony criminal record, the character and strength of the evidence, his, his history on release, and his ties to the community. Of these, the defendant only has a positive, positive consideration in ties to the community. 
The rest of those factors weigh heavily in favor of the court not body fighting the $500,000 cash bond. The only chance since the last time the court visited the issue of bond is the court has now found probable cause that the defendant has committed a felony offense. Defendants' attempts to raise money, bond money have been well publicized. He's attempting to raise bond money from sources unrelated to him, and if raised, if successful in raising money from strangers or other sources, that's, of course, a factor for this court to consider. There's no incentive at all to comply with the bond, no financial incentive other than to risk to violate that particular kind of bond. The suggestion also that a salvage yard could be put up as a surety does not provide incentive for Mr. Avery not to flee, to be made available for future court appearances. This court also must consider community safety, the degree of violence, again involved. The fact that this was a stranger, or at very best, a casual acquaintance, homicide allegation. Risk of future violence to the additional victims or members of the community is substantial. For all those factors, I'm asking the court to deny the defense motion at this time. Thank you. I'm turning the other way. Just a brief response, Your Honor. The court. Yes, Mr. Loy. I, I'll turn it away. I think it's worth noting that Mr. Avery is, at this point, presumed innocent. The state has provided his guilt to a jury, so I think it may be premature to assume any guilt on his part of the allegations against him. Regarding the efforts to raise bail money, I think I can tell the court that those efforts have not met with a great deal of success. I don't think there's much chance that the strangers are going to be donating anything even remotely close to the amount of money needed for bail here. What we're asking the court to do is to allow Mr. Avery's family to, to, to be sureties, and Mr. Avery, I'm sure, would not want to imperil his family's business by violating his bail. And that's all we, I have to say at this point, Your Honor. The court, all right. The factors that the court is to consider as setting bail set forth in Section 8969.01, Subsection 4, each of the parties have touched on those factors in their arguments. And there are a number of factors that weren't consideration of Mr. Avery's request, specifically his inability to make bail as it is set now in his lifelong residence in Manitowoc County, and the fact that there's no re record that he's ever tried to flee before and apparently cooperative with officers early in the investigation of this matter. There are also factors that support the state's argument Specifically, the court is to consider the number of gravity of offenses in this case. The defendant is charged with three felonies, including, most significantly, first-degree intentional homicide, which carries with its penalty life in prison if convicted. The court also considers whether the alleged acts were violent in nature, and court certainly at this time is making no determination or venturing no opinion the guilt or innocence of the defendant, but the allegations of a crime which is certainly violent in nature. And with respect to the strength of the evidence, the court has already found probable cause to believe that the defendant committed a felony and bound the defendant over for trial. Based primarily on those circumstances, considerations, the court feels that its initial determination is appropriate to bail amounts or amount is still appropriate, so I'm not going to modify bail. I'm going to leave it at 500000 I will, however, indicate that in lieu of cash, the court would, would consider mortgage of the property of the defendant's family if that's what's offered, providing there was a sufficient showing of the equity in the property and its fair market value to meet part, of the, part or all of the 500000 Mr. Kratz, I would direct you to prepare the order with respect to the court's decision in this case. Is there anything further today before we adjourn? Mr. Kratz? Attorney Kratz, I don't believe so, Judge. Thank you. The court, Mr. Loy. Attorney Loy, no, Your Honor. All right. If not, we're adjourned for today. Attorney Johnson, thank you. Attorney Loy, thank you, Your Honor. Proceedings closed.